Recently, in the President's State of the Union, Trump highlighted what he called wasteful spending by the Biden administration, singling out a supposed $8 million that was spent for making mice transgender. Here's what he said. $8 million for making mice transgender. <laughs> this is real. Some critics are quick to point out that maybe he confused transgenic with transgender. But the White House stood by the claim, stating, Last night, President Trump highlighted many of the egregious examples of waste, fraud, and abuse funded by American taxpayers, including $8 million spent by the Biden administration for making mice transgender. They then linked to six specific studies that they say support this position. And yes, in just about every single study, mice were in fact given sex hormones in order to simulate or mimic the biophysiology of a trans person or a trans mouse. But that's not the whole story. So rather than lean on pundits or political commentary, let's look at what each study involves. Links are provided by the White House so you can verify this for yourself. The first study examines how hormones like estrogen influence immune responses to HIV vaccines, specifically in the context of transgender women. Researchers administered estrogen to male mice, along with medications to block testosterone to replicate a trans woman's hormonal environment. They then vaccinated the mice against HIV and measured changes in antibody production and in other immune markers. The goal was to see if hormone therapy altered how well the vaccine worked. Transgender women face a disproportionately high risk of HIV infection, so understanding whether hormones affected vaccine efficacy is a worthwhile investigation. The second study investigated how testosterone therapy impacts the reproductive system in those who are assigned female at birth, with a focus on trans men's long-term fertility. Researchers mimicked this by essentially administering testosterone to female mice and observing whether changes occurred in ovulation and fertility rates. They also tested whether stopping testosterone restored typical ovarian function or if any of the impacts remained permanent. This is important information for transgender men who might want to preserve fertility. There just isn't clear data at this point on how hormone therapy may affect the future chances of trans men carrying a pregnancy or retrieving viable eggs. The third study explores the relationship between testosterone use, breast cancer risk, and cancer treatment in trans men. Using female mice, some of which had their ovaries removed, scientists replicated male-level testosterone environments to see if it altered tumor growth and cancer treatment outcome. They measured tumor size over time, tracked genetic changes in breast tissue, and compared outcomes between mice that continued to receive testosterone and those that did not. Because breast tissue is highly hormone sensitive, transgender men who have not had a complete mastectomy still have some breast cells that could potentially become cancerous. This research aims to help us understand whether testosterone therapy could or should continue during breast cancer treatment. The fourth study focuses on adolescents, particularly trans youth, and looks at how puberty blocking drugs, followed by hormone treatments, might affect skeletal development. We all know that the teenage years are crucial for bone density gains, but what we don't know is whether altering hormone levels during this period could have long-term effects on fracture risk and overall bone strength. So, researchers suppressed puberty in mice, then followed up with estrogen or testosterone treatments. In parallel, they examined how hormone changes affect the gut microbiome, because mounting evidence suggests that gut microbiomes play a significant role in bone health. Finally, the sixth study looks at why cisgender women often have more severe and frequent asthma attacks than cisgender men and whether transgender women on estrogen therapy face similar risks. Researchers observed male and female mice exposed to allergens in the presence or absence of high estrogen levels. By comparing inflammation levels in the lungs, airway reactivity, and immune cell activity, they could pinpoint how estrogen receptors drive or reduce asthma symptoms. 
Because so little data exists on asthma in trans women, the findings could ideally lead to better and more effective therapies for anyone whose asthma worsens due to high estrogen. So was the president accurate in saying that the Biden administration spent millions to make mice transgender? Well, in a very narrow sense, maybe? These researchers do give mice hormone regimens that mimic transgender hormone therapy, but that's a gross oversimplification that leaves out the real purpose. Each study addresses a serious gap in medical knowledge about HIV prevention, fertility, cancer treatment, bone health, reproductive signals in the brain, and asthma, all for a historically understudied population. Taken as a whole, the research is about improving healthcare for transgender people, and in many cases, discovering insights that can help cisgender patients as well. Critics might latch onto the phrase transgender mice, but the reality is that these animal models are a standard ethical tool in medical research whenever scientists need a controlled environment to understand complex hormone interactions. For many, this work isn't a frivolous expense, but essential science, aimed at giving doctors and patients evidence-based guidelines that could improve health outcomes and save lives.